In this episode of Falmouth in Focus, we check out the newest police department tool to educate parents about substance abuse, shop at a flea market to benefit local felines, and help cut the ribbon for the new Falmouth Community Media Center. All this and much more on this edition of Falmouth in Focus. Hello and welcome to Falmouth in Focus, FCTV's current affairs program. I'm your host, Michael Kasparian. The Falmouth Police Department recently invested in a hidden in plain sight trailer designed to help educate parents to be able to spot items in their children's bedrooms that may alert them to signs of substance abuse in their home. We took a tour with Sergeant Jamie Donahue to see what's inside and discuss strategies parents can use to help keep their children free from dangerous behaviors and addictive substances. My name is Jamie Donahue. I'm a sergeant with the Falmouth Police Department. Hidden in Plain Sight is a program that a lot of communities are doing and that I got involved with as a school resource officer. Um, it's really meant to raise awareness with families and uh, foster communication between parents and teens. The point of the trailer is for parents to be able to come in, to tour the trailer, to educate themselves on current trends, um, signs and symptoms of drug use, and to, pre to prevent drug use and for early intervention. So this bedroom is a mock teenage bedroom. It's as realistic as we can make it and it's interesting because it can be changed to keep current with the trends and also you can change it to reflect modern times. So as is right now, it's kind of modeled as a teenage boy's bedroom. What's interesting about this trailer is that it's, it's convenient. We can place it outside of parent-teacher conferences. We can place it outside of sporting events. So what's, inter what's interesting about that is it's convenient for parents. They don't have to seek it out. It'll be there. And we have, um, we have an audience at those events who would be interested in learning about something because we all live busy lives and we don't necessarily have time to seek it out. This is convenient. It's not just going to be police manned. Right, um, yes, yeah. We have community partners that can take the trailer out and ha host it for events as well. So the Fal Falmouth Substance Use Council can take it and has people that are trained in this, as well as uh, people from the school district. So if parents are interested in touring the trailer and getting more information on the program, or even reserving the trailer, they can call the chief's office uh, for a reservation. We'll also be posting when the trailer is available on our Facebook page, as well as other community pages. Look for the trailer to be on public display at various events throughout Falmouth in the coming months. Thanks to Jeff Wyman for that informative report. Improving the water quality in Little Pond has been a challenge that the town of Falmouth has been addressing using various strategies during the past several years. Placing shellfish in the pond has proven to be a successful method and FCTV was there as volunteers, students, and town staff deployed oysters from the Falmouth Inner Harbor to Little Pond where they will continue to grow. We're placing shellfish in Little Pond here, which is located on the other side of Bristol Beach, because we want to improve the water quality in Little Pond, which we've already done over the last uh, number of years through the use of shellfish. So we will set up stations like we did last week to fill the bags. There's only today about 240, 250 bags we want to get out. Last week we, we pushed I think over what, four, what did we do, about 400 last week. A lot of our work is done with volunteers, students, members of the community who just come out and love to be involved. We, we work real closely with these different groups and we're so fortunate to have all of them. They give you a lot of education and, and you're, you're growing and you know, regardless of your age, you have to grow. And you work with young people, you tend to be more vibrant and, and enjoy life a little bit as far as I'm concerned. Three hundred in the bucket. Those can go right in here. There you are. Thank you very much. So what we're doing right now is we're getting the associated weights with each upweller. 
uh, so that we know exactly where to stock them at, what weights to stock them at. We're trying to stock them in a density of 400 per bag. And so what we do is we go in and we take individual samples from each upweller and then weigh those individual samples. Um, so the known weights are then calculated so we're able to go ahead and distribute into each bag that appropriate weight. So we're going to stock this at a density of 276. So we got a good, good measurement there. Next thing we're going to do is start to remove these silos. Today we have an impressive volunteer crew as well as our crew of student interns and seasonal staff members. We are deploying our first year oysters that have been growing in Falmouth Inner Harbor <laughs> since okay. about mid-June. How many buckets should we put in each tub? Like four? Yeah. So they're not too heavy guys. We are staging our bags here. They're going to go out to our little pond farm right in the water right offshore where they will sit in our floating oyster bags until about mid-October. We are weighing about 400 animals out per bag to control our stocking densities to make sure our bags roughly have about the same number of animals. This makes it a little bit easier on the other end when we go to move our animals out. It keeps our bags from getting too heavy and it keeps our animals growing beautifully. We're gonna need two runners. We need two people filling right here. You're gonna be going this way. We'll go through your function in a minute. We're gonna need a second person for putting tops on. Bernie, do you wanna be a runner? Wanna be a filler? Brendan, you wanna be a runner on this side? You're gonna work your way down. You wanna start right over here. You're gonna be going this way. Do you wanna do it? Okay, come on over. And I'm gonna show you what we're looking for here. 276 is roughly going to look like this. My husband and I decided to volunteer for the Shellfish Commission because we went to the McCoy open house and we learned all about oystering. And they were so welcoming, and there was a lot of volunteer opportunities, and I thought this is something my husband and I could do together. This is one of the only nitrogen solution problems that actually provides a benefit beyond just hard sewering. If you think of what it costs to put in one sewer, with that amount of money, we can grow millions of pieces of shellfish which go out into the wild resource. We weigh all the shellfish when we're done in Little Pond and then move them to a secondary location, uh, either in East Falmouth or West Falmouth, where the animals continue to grow. They are weighed again at the end of their secondary growing period and then the animals are put out for harvest in East Falmouth or West Falmouth. People ask, if you can't shellfish in Little Pond, you know, how can you eat the shellfish afterward if they're in another pond? So those animals, have the ability to match the water quality. So if we replace them into a water body which meets the state and local standards to be open to shellfishing, uh, then the shellfish that are put in there in rapid time go ahead and uh, assume that water quality uh, that is in that pond. So at the end of it, uh, if you're a resident, you can purchase a, a shellfish license. They, if you're a senior, you can purchase a license for $6 and literally get oysters well through Christmas. I shellfish and this time of year I get uh, mostly quahogs and uh, I can get uh, steamer clams once in a while. And in the fall and winter time we do made basic oysters. For more information on the shellfish program, check out the Falmouth Department of Marine and Environmental Services Facebook page. Thanks to Mary Kate Shea for that story. It's time now for three things from Town Hall. FCTV's condensed version of the takeaways from recent municipal meetings. Selections are chosen based on community impact. Members of the Falmouth Litter Reduction Team presented their recent findings to the Board of Selectmen in their latest meeting. The report gave insight to where, what, and the amount of litter around town. The Selectmen were interested in the findings and specifically the issue of nip bottles, which seem to be the most prominent form of litter in Falmouth. Just a, you know, incredible presentation, amazing amount of information and, and, you know, kind of working with the schools and various groups. The majority of the town folk and the majority of the visitors are not littering. Um, but there's some, there's some who are, and that's what we need to find ways. And it's, it's really challenging because litter has been a problem for a long time. But we really think there's, we can do something about it. 
A group of Falmouth citizens came before the board to update them on their findings and research regarding municipal fiber and how this may be integrated into Falmouth for the future. The group cited other communities that have municipal fiber and laid out possible options for funding and business model for such a complicated infrastructure. Falmouth needed to invest in its future, invest in its future by um, um, becoming or emulating one of the 800 communities in this country and uh, in, in Massachusetts to create um, community broadband networks. I see this, and I think the rest of the committee sees this, is this is a, <coughs> for the town, especially the citizens of Falmouth, the purpose of a Falmouth community network is not to replace the existing providers for it, but provide choice so that there's a choice. And what we've seen and uh, what's happened is that the commercial providers of service uh, in any different towns, they see when they see this, they will drop their price. They will reduce prices because they see competition. The Charter Review Committee gave an update to the Board of Selectmen discussing their recent work on changes to the town charter. The Charter Review Committee continues to work on sections of the charter, changing some language and outdated terminology. The Selectmen thank the work that the committee is doing and stated they look forward to the next report on this important document. So I don't disagree with any of the suggestions, and I think they're really uh, well done. It's not an easy read, but I think it really makes sense. And I think your offer to make some notes with regard to bylaws that might be required to replace some of the language that's removed would be great, a great start for us, because I agree that if we're going to make some of these changes with regard to committees, that we should be prepared to incorporate bylaws that reinforce what's important. Something that we should think about having, the way that all this work has been done on the um, volunteer handbook, I think we should have like crib sheets for our town government because, you know, no one is going to sit, other than everybody maybe in this room or folks on charter room, no one's going to really sit and read our charter. Um, and other than Mark Finneran, maybe, <laughs> who <laughs> likes to do that. But we should have something that's either connected to the charter or a link on our computer or a resource that really explains in kind of a very user friendly, it can even be fun and, and you know, engaging way, what our town government is, how it works, the fact that the charter controls, you know, something that makes it, um, you know, interesting for people when they don't, I mean, so many times we hear that folks don't understand what does the Board of Selectmen do, what does planning do, you know, for people who might want to be involved to be able to kind of get a quick idea, um, because otherwise when we direct people to sort of the charter, I mean, it's just not, that's not real. Yeah, that's not, I think, it, I think it's not realistic, so. To see the meetings in their entirety, check out Government Channel 15's program schedule at fctv.org. We turn now to this month's calendar segment. On August 12th, Falmouth Museums on the Green hosts a celebration of rhythm and verse for the whole family. Winners of the Catherine Lee Bates Poetry Contest and community leaders read their favorite poems to honor our famed poet's birthday. The party begins at 4 p.m. at the Falmouth Public Library. The world-class New Balance Falmouth Road Race celebrates its 47th running this year on August 18th. More than 12,000 runners will gather in Woods Hole for the 2019 starting gun, and if you can't secure a good vantage point to view the runners in person, tune in to FCTV Channel 13 for live race coverage. The annual Falmouth Rotary Craft Fair and Antique Show begins on Saturday, August 31st at Marine Park on Scranton Avenue. Don't miss this great event that features antiques and local crafts from all over. And here at the Falmouth Community Media Center, join us for Fun Time Friday on August 9th from 10 a.m. to 12 noon, where kids ages 6 to 12 will learn puppet making and claymation. On Thursday, August 22nd at 7.30 p.m., FCTV will be hosting our first open mic night. Sign up begins at 7 p.m. for participants interested in sharing their original poetry, story, comedy, or spoken word in a five minute time slot. And finally, the featured artist for August at the gallery at FCTV is David C. Etler. David's exhibit of pen, ink, and watercolors is titled From the Eye to the Pen 2 and will be on display until August 28th. We're going to take a quick break to look at an adoptable cat from People for Cats. And when we return, we'll do some shopping at the annual People for Cats flea market. Stay with us. 
Hunter is a handsome domestic short hair male. This eight-year-old sports an orange tabby coat liberally accented by white on his bib, tummy, paws, and tail. He also has a very cute splash of white on his nose. Hunter is a total love bug, adoring all the attention he can get. He came to PFC when his owner realized that Hunter was lonely because he was by himself much of the time. Hunter tends to have crystals in his urine, so he needs to be kept on a prescription food that dissolves the crystals. Hunter has also been loved a bit too much and needs to lose a few pounds to get to an ideal weight. Why not come in and meet this love bug and see if you'd like to give this big purring machine a forever home of his own? Welcome back. The annual People for Cats flea market fundraiser was held earlier this month at the John Wesley United Methodist Church, and FCTV was there to check out the fantastic bargains, cat items, and People for Cats branded clothing. Hi, my name is Ann Levitt. I'm the president of People for Cats. And today we're having our annual flea market sale in the John Wellesley United Methodist Church. And this is one of our largest uh, fundraisers that we have. It's very popular. We're a non-profit cat shelter. We find homes for adoptable uh, kitties. Uh, we also do uh, trapping for feral cats and do the spay neuter program uh, so that they won't reproduce and we also educate the public on cat care. Well, we have probably close to 100 volunteers. Um, we have kittens that do not stay in the shelter. Uh, they go to short-term foster care. That way they get socialized, they get introduced to all the noises and uh, of the homes. And we have long-term uh, care fosters. These are kitties that probably have medical conditions and they cannot be uh, adopted. So instead of being in the shelter, they're in a home environment, which is uh, really great. We also have uh, two shifts each day that come in, one in the morning, one in the evening. They come in and uh, they feed the kitties and you know, clean uh, the boxes. And we always, need, um, we always need volunteers. If you'd like to be a foster person, please call our hotline for kittens or for an adult cat that needs a home. Or uh, you come in and uh, be a volunteer for other things that we uh, need to have done. Oh, we have about uh, 20 volunteers here today helping out. Uh, we've been pricing since March, so it is a big effort uh, to go to the shelter. We have all the items there in the basement. And each Monday, we have a team that goes into the shelter and we do our pricing. This helps pay uh, the vet bills, towards the vet bills. For the kitties, uh, vet bills uh, range about $80,000 a year, so this event helps us pay that expense. For more information about People for Cats, check out their website at peopleforcats.org. Thanks to Justin Moore for that coverage. Every year, Fenway Park hosts a workout for all 10 teams in the Cape Cod Baseball League. It gives the players a chance to come out and show what they can do on a big league field in front of Major League Scouts. The Falmouth Commodores broadcast team was on hand for this year's event. Welcome to Fenway Park. David Korzanowski joined alongside Danny LaRose. It's the Fenway workout for all 10 teams in the Cape League. And Danny, what a beautiful sight here, and it couldn't be a better day. I mean, come on. We're right by the pesky pole right here, so you can sign your name. We saw the whole Bourne team signing their names, and I don't know, for a lot of these guys, for us, I mean, it's our second year here, and we're still coming in here. You're like a, you're like a kid. For so many of these players and interns alike, this is a childhood dream to be here and to be at Fenway Park. For one, Hayden Cantrell, a Red Sox Sox fan, his second year at Fenway. Katie Florio talked to him about what it's like to be here today. Thanks guys, Katie Florio here with Hayden Cantrell at Fenway Park and Hayden to make things better. I was just told that you are a Red Sox fan. Yeah, I, I've been a Red Sox fan for a long time. Now, as a kid, you know, you dream of playing college baseball. You guys make it to that level. And then the next dream is making it professionally, making it to the bigs. To be on a field like this working out today, what's that like? Uh, it's, you know, it's really special. And, you know, being able to come out here and, uh, you know, my, little, my family thinks it's cool. And, you know, just get to tell my friends, you know, if, if maybe I don't get to play in the bigs one day, I'll, I'll get to say I played in some big league parks. Your second time with this workout with Falmouth, does it ever get old? No, it doesn't get old. It, it doesn't get old just being with the guys every day, uh, but Fenway doesn't get old for sure. I mean, this atmosphere is nice, empty stadium, so the balls are loud, uh, grass is really nice. You know, I mean, it, it, I can literally go on and on. 
Thanks a lot, guys. And you heard about how it's every child's dream to play here at Fenway Park. It's also every child's dream to win a World Series at the professional level. Right behind us, a little bit out of our shot is the 2018 World Series flag. The Red Sox reigning champions of professional baseball. And Danny, the Commodores just won the 2019 College World Series, the Vanderbilt Commodores, of course. Last year, it was the Oregon State Beavers. And Katie Florio talked to Troy Clonch. Katie? Oregon, Troy. You're used to big stages. Just last year, you won a national championship with Oregon State. Now we're standing on the field of the reigning World Series champs. Does this bring you back to your days as a young kid when those are the kinds of things that you dream about? Yeah, it definitely does. Uh, you know, getting to hit BP on this field and kind of just being out there and standing in places where you know, your childhood heroes stood is, is a really cool experience. Just mentioned, you just took BP behind us, did a couple other workouts in the outfield. Take me through what all you guys have done so far. Yeah, so so far uh, we ran the 60, 60 yard dash, um, came in, played a little catch, took infield outfield, um, us catchers, we did our pop times, and then uh, yeah, we're hitting BP right now. I know you're from California. Who was your team growing up? Uh, oddly enough, the Red Sox. Yeah, I've uh, been a bit, big Red Sox fan since I was little. I uh, got to come here when I was 12 years old, um, and then I actually just came back here Monday, and it was, it was cool. I, I remembered everything. It was a really cool experience. Thank you, Troy. Guys, back to you. So with a different angle and a different spin, we brought in a different face and Tony Bianco talking to one of the Red Sox scouts. Tony? Thanks, guys. I'm here with Ray Fagnan. And Ray, can you tell me a little bit about your position with the Red Sox? I'm the North Northeast Regional Scouting Supervisor. So I'm responsible for New England, New York, New Jersey, Canada. The value of this is a typical day at the Cape, you go see a game, you hope maybe you get batting practice, you may or may not get infield practice, you may or may not get an opportunity to see the player run, but today you get to see all that stuff. So the rest of the summer, when you're going to see games, you don't have to worry about getting there three hours ahead of time seeing batting practice. You've eliminated, you've been able to evaluate their raw power, you've been evaluate, able to evaluate their arm strength, you've been able to evaluate their running speed. So you just see games and concentrate on that, but there's no variables here and just a level playing field. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Danny, David, back to you. The 2019 Falmouth Commodores, no matter what's in their future, they know that this will be a day to remember. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay tuned to our social media for the rest of this Falmouth Commodores season. Thanks to the Commodores broadcast team for that report. Wellstrong is a T-ticket gym whose mission it is to create a safe and supportive community for individuals in recovery from substance use disorder. FCTV spoke to Wellstrong's founder and president, about this unique fitness and wellness community. Hi, I'm Amy Doherty. I am founder of WellStrong. So I started WellStrong because of a personal experience in my life with uh, both um, addiction in my family and um, uh, health, exercise, yoga, meditation, making a difference in my life. And I saw a need in the community uh, with the opioid crisis and uh, so many people struggling with addiction. And I knew it would make a difference for people in recovery to have those resources available to them. The thing that makes WellStrong different than any other gym is the sense of community for our members. Everybody in here is um, sober, in recovery, and when they walk through the door, they know that everybody here has been through something similar. They look around and they say, wow, look at us, look at how, you know, we're, how strong we are, how well we're doing. They feel safe, they feel supportive. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a community uh, where people can come just to talk and get advice from other people and know that it's always here. A huge part of recovery is connection and what I found even the minute I walked into Wellstrong is I connected with the teacher. Um, she was teaching a yoga class and I found a friendship um, and it really made me want to keep coming back to the point where this year especially this winter I started becoming a really active member in all the classes um, and I was given the opportunity through an instructor at Wellstrong to actually train to be a teacher. She saw something in me and it was so empowering that I was just, I felt very welcomed in the community and encouraged to pursue my dreams. And it is something I've never found anywhere else in um, a gym. I wasn't anonymous, I was a member of the community and welcomed every day. I think it's really important to have fun and sobriety and I really try to highlight that in this class as well as feeling invigorated after the workout. Also, in addition to the 94 or so members, we have um, clients from the different treatment centers come and use our gym and come to our classes as part of their program at 
the treatment center, whether it's Gosnold's, Emerson House, or Miller House, or Recovering Champions. So it was important to us to be um, affordable and available to anybody in recovery. We are a nonprofit, and we are supported by our fundraisers and grants. And we've had some incredible support from our community, including Falmouth Human Services, Falmouth Road Race, uh, Cape Cod Healthcare, and the United Way. I really come here, other than the physical um, aspect of it, is uh, the mindfulness that the gym uh, teaches through yoga and the sense of community. You know, it's, um, it's like-minded people with the same goal, you know, just to strengthen their spirituality and, you know, so much of that is not taught in a regular gym or out in the real world. One of the most rewarding things for me through this whole process is the people that I've met here. Um, it's, uh, it's a diverse group of incredible people that have been through some very, very difficult times. And as a result, they're strong, they're resilient, they help each other out, they're supportive. And to be part of, uh, of that environment of people has been a really special part for me. To learn more about WellStrong's programs, visit their website at wellstrong.org. Thanks to Andrew Richards for that story. We're going to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll check out the ribbon cutting ceremony and open house right here at the new Falmouth Community Media Center. Stay with us. After years of planning and preparation and months of construction and moving, FCTV held the historic grand opening of the brand new Falmouth Community Media Center, cutting the ribbon to officially open the facility to the public. The new media center is a major expansion on FCTV's former facility, offering more space for more studio programs, post-production, animation work, artist galleries, workforce development, and many more programs and services. At the event, the public was offered tours of the media center while noted local chefs Bobby Jarvis, Gail Blakely, and Troy Clarkson provided cooking demonstrations in the new Studio A kitchen. So good afternoon and thank you for joining us for the grand opening of the Falmouth Community Media Center. My name is Deborah Rogers. I'm the CEO. This facility stands as, as a testament that here in Falmouth we value our collective history and the unique stories that make up the fabric of our community. That we understand that democracy flourishes when people are active participants in their government, educated as literate and critical thinkers who are not only consumers of media, but have the knowledge, tools, and means to use media to express themselves. This facility stands as a testament that in our community, there's a place where media belongs to all of our citizens. Thank you to everyone who emboldened us to move from a one-room, second-floor facility to a media center that empowers our citizens to develop and access 21st century communication tools. Thank you to our members, board of directors, advisory committee, staff, board of selectmen, uh, our town manager, elected officials, donors, large and small, and a special thanks to Falmouth Road Race and Jeff Nickerson, who I th thought was gonna be here, but not yet, and to Crane Appliance, Bayside Kitchen and Bath, Waypoint, Duffany Builders, David Rogers Electric, and Eastman's Hardware. Thank you to our building committee, led by Mike Duffany, architect Jeff Metcalf, owner's representative John Scanlon, general contractor Delb Delbrook JKS, our Falmouth Chamber of Commerce, and our lender, Martha's Vineyard Savings Bank. A special thanks to Rita Pacheco and our development committee for helping to organize this event and our guest chefs using our studio kitchen for the first time today, Bobby Jarvis, Gail Blakely, and Troy Clarkson. We hope this will be the first of many times that we all gather together in this, your center. Thank you to everyone who believed in our mission and has stood with us since our founding in 1992. At this time, I'd like to turn this over to our board treasurer, Michael Feingold. Hello everyone and welcome. I hope you'll enjoy the new facility as much as we do. I'll do a countdown. Three, two, 
one. We're open! Wow, it was a great event for the community, the, uh, the opening of the Falmouth Community Media Center. I mean, amazing for everybody. A lot of people in attendance at 4 o'clock. The ribbon cutting went well. And of course, uh, the weather could not have been any better. This has just been such an awesome office opening. The place is huge, there's cooking shows going on, and it's a real testament to the work of FCTV to make an incredibly beautiful space for this entire community. It's a great facility, and, and we're really expanding in the capability of what we can do at FCTV. So we'd like to all have you come down and take a look at it. And, uh, um, and see, and see what uh, your interests are and how we can meet those interests. It's very exciting. It's an amazing space. Deb and everybody have done an amazing job uh, building this out. And the fact that there's so many people here is exciting. In the middle of summer, in the middle of the week, uh, says great things for the future here. So I'm really excited to, to see what comes next. What a great event and so exciting to see this facility. I can't wait to come back, get my hands on some of those knobs and make a show. You know, at a time when uh, the print media has been on decline uh, for a number of decades and just news media in general has been on the decline, it's really important that we continue to shine a light on the local and state level to have transparent and engaging government. And that's where people like um, the folks at FCTV come in to shine a light on transparency on government. So um, it's really important uh, uh, that they have facilities like this to help complement their work. FCTV would like to thank all of the countless members, volunteers, viewers, and donors to help make this vision of a modern, state-of-the-art community media center a reality in Falmouth. We hope you'll come to visit the new center, get involved, join, and support us. FCTV wants you to know that television can be as easy as hitting record on your smartphone. We'd like to invite all Falmouth residents and visitors to share their slice of life with us. Email us your photos and videos, or upload them to Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram using the hashtag MyFalmouth or Falmouth in Focus to be featured on the show. Thank you to our most recent contributors. We leave you now with the sights and sounds of the 175th Barnstable County Fair. Thank you for watching Falmouth in Focus. We'll see you next time.